Exhibit A, the Google Pixel 3 XL with one rear camera. Exhibit B, the OnePlus 6T with two rear cameras. Exhibit C, the Samsung Galaxy A7 with no less than three rear cameras. And finally, the Samsung Galaxy A9 with one, two, three, four rear cameras. So my question to you guys is, how many cameras are enough? This is Deepak from 91 Mobiles. And by the end of this video, I'm going to try and answer that question to you. Somewhere in the middle, I'm also going to unbox the Galaxy A9 and give you a closer look. But, sorry about that. So, here's the box. And what you get inside is a transparent case, which is always a handy addition. Basically gets you started as soon as you open the box. The usual stuff, which includes a USB Type-C cable, a fast charger and a pair of wired earphones which are always very handy to have and you know what that means it means that the phone actually does have a 3.5 mm headset socket which is again one of the features that a lot of phones are missing these days but giving you a closer look at the phone the Galaxy A9 it looks very classy it looks flagship grade very nice gradient finish at the back nice blue color on this particular unit it looks very premium feels really nice in the hand right and just to recap the specs for you this is a 6.3 inch super amulet display very capable very sharp the key highlight there is no notch right the usual stuff in terms of design and port placement right a USB uh, type C port at the bottom uh, next to the 3.5 mm headset socket uh, the usual placement of the controls, fingerprint scanner at the back and this row of four camera lenses all stacked together vertically. But here's a closer look. They look slightly odd but overall the phone looks pretty nice. It looks it's nice and colorful, feels premium. So what, camera, what Samsung has done here with these cameras is basically taken a bunch of different dual rear camera implementations and packed them together into this one phone. So what you get is apart from the 24 megapixel uh, primary sensor, you also get an 8 megapixel wide angle sensor, a 10 megapixel uh, telephoto lens to zoom in and a 5 megapixel sensor to give you depth information so you can capture those nice bokeh shots. At the front is a 24 megapixel selfie camera as well. And the core specs, a Snapdragon 660 processor which is very mid-range, mated to up to 8 gigs of RAM and 128 GB of storage. And powering the show is a very respectable 3800 mAh battery with fast charge. Now what Samsung has done here is brought a flagship grid feature, a very interesting feature down to the mid-range for a phone price under rupees 40,000, they are giving you four cameras which is something that no other phone does at the moment and for that pricing the Samsung Galaxy A9 goes up against the very powerful OnePlus 60 and that is a very difficult phone to beat because it's very powerful completely loaded in terms of specifications and priced very similarly so which phone do you buy right it completely depends on you whether you want performance or you want the bunch of camera features offered by the Samsung Galaxy A9 and to answer the question I posed at the very beginning of this video, how many cameras are really enough? The simple answer to that is, it's the end result that matters and you should not make a decision just based on the number of cameras. The Google Pixel 3 XL for example can give you both bokeh as well as optical zoom like capabilities using just a single camera. The Samsung Galaxy A9 does pack a lot in a single device though. So if photography is important to you, especially in this particular price range of under 40,000, this is the phone you should take a look at very closely. We'll be getting out a full review of this phone very shortly. Stay tuned for that. And in the meantime, if you have any questions, feel free to use the comment box below and we'll be sure to get back to you. Food for thought, Nokia might just release a phone with five cameras very, very soon. Thanks for watching.